Hey everybody, welcome back from my fifth tutorial here on YouTube. Uh, happy you could join me. I had a lot of fun painting this one. Uh, kind of your typical Bob scene, but uh, something that even I think a beginner could uh, follow along with and uh, have a lot of fun with and great success. So give her a watch. Uh, can't wait for you to try it and uh, we will see you on the other side. Hey everybody, hope everybody's doing well. I'm glad you joined me. I'm going to be painting a pretty cool mountainscape here. We're going to get started here. Uh, we're going to give you a uh, lowdown on the colors I'm going to be using. And today, as you can see in my palette, one moment, we have some alizarin crimson, some mountain mix which is basically a mixture of all your darks, some uh, burnt umber, Van Dyke brown, Prussian blue, phthalo blue, uh, we'll probably add a little phthalo green up here too, some titanium white, we've got some red, uh, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, cadmium yellow, and sap green. I don't know if we'll use all these, but we'll certainly use a portion of them. Um, so, really looking forward to doing this. Again, welcome aboard, people. Uh, glad to have you all here. So, let's get rolling. All right, the first thing I'm going to do, we're going to go into, we're going to get started here. Like I said, we're going to have a nice little uh, mountain scene here. Um, probably going to put a mountain in this portion here. Uh, some trees, lots of fun stuff. I'm not quite sure. I got a rough idea, so we'll see. First thing we're going to do is come into the stalo blue that we have right here, and we're just going to pull a little bit out. So let's just take your brush and basically just going to pull a little bit out like this. Not too much. We can always add more color. It's much harder to take the color away. So we tap those bristles and get a nice, even distribution of paint. So it's not too much. And we're just going to come up here and start on the doesn't matter which side you start on, we're going to come over here and I just kind of like to, I like little X's, however you want. There's a gazillion way, different ways to do a sky if you've watched me live here. Um, the four times I've done it, you know, I've kind of approached my skies differently each time. Um, this one we're going to keep kind of basic. Uh, it's going to be a blue sky, obviously. <laughs> and we're going to spend maybe a little more time on, on the mountains and the, the foreground. So. Get a little more of this color, just a little more, darken up those sides a little bit. And then basically we're just going to work our way down. I should say, before I started, I put a uh, coat of Gambling Clear Gel on my canvas. Uh, a lot of times in this Bob Ross style we use liquid white. Um, I like to use the clear gel. It uh, has a nice effect. It keeps your colors very true, uh, and very bright, and they don't dilute. Um, Sometimes it's nice to have that dilution, but uh, not always. And in this case, in a lot of cases, I like just using the clear gel as it is. And again, we're just putting color in. Don't worry about all these marks. We're going to blend all that out. We want a little darker on the top, and then as we work down towards the horizon, the color will get lighter, as it would in nature, for the most part. And that's what we want. So again, just a little color. Okay. Something like that. Doesn't have to be too exact. Now I'm going to go into a little bit of this Prussian blue. Just a little bit. Again, we're going to tap that out real good. Tap, tap, tap. And we're just going to darken up these corners. In a, in a landscape painting, if the corners are dark, it leads your eye more towards the center of the painting. Or at least so they say. <laughs> I'm just going to darken those up a little bit, come across the top. And again, this doesn't matter. We're going to blend all this out. Just putting some color on there. And again, that gambling clear gel allows us to push that paint around. I don't like to put a lot of medium in, meaning that the liquid white or the liquid clear. I like a uh, minimal amount. Yeah, I got to blend a little more, but 
wet on wet, the less paint you have, the easier everything is. So even though I may suffer when I blend a little bit, that's okay. So again, we're just tapping in some different shades of this blue. That's all we're doing. Let me get rolling. And you can leave some lighter spots. It, it doesn't matter. Like I said, tonight I'm just going for a pretty basic sky. Um, nothing too crazy. I'm going to add a little phthalo green for my water. All right, now for the water portion, and I'm going to have a lot of land uh, down here. Uh, some water in the middle. I'm not entirely sure where it's going to go, but for that, we're, for the water section, we're going to get a little bit of that phthalo green and dip into that uh, phthalo blue. So just a nice even mix of the two. It doesn't matter. The green's okay in the water because obviously water is often green. So we're just going to tap, tap that in. Okay, and then from the sides in when you're doing your water. We always want to start on the outside and we're going to bend the bristles and just drag it to the center and then release it so that it's darker here and in the center we have a more feathered edge. The purpose of that is when we blend it it's a lot easier to blend a feathered edge than a hard edge. Plus, the light section that's left will be a little sheen of light on the water. Hopefully. <laughs> so again, just pull here and release it. And we'll bring it up. And I'm not quite sure where the water is going to be, but we, we will see. And I know it looks a little rough, and that's right, because that's the way oil painting is. It always looks like crap at first, and then once you start getting it together, everything happens. So we're just dragging this to the middle. That's all. Very simple. Make sure these lines are straight. Very important for them to be straight. Because still water lies flat. And this is going to be a lake or a river that's going to be laying pretty flat. All right, very good. And again, we want a little darker in the corners down here, and then a lighter as it goes upwards to the horizon. So just make that a little bit darker, and we'll blend all that out, so no worries. With this technique, you can fix any mistake. Okay. Very good. Just kind of look across. There you go. So, that's a rough sky in water. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to take a clean brush, clean, dry, two inch or whatever, two inch works, and I'm going to start blending first in the lighter sections of the sky. Again, I'm not going to do too much with the sky this time. We blend in the lighter sections so that we don't pull the darker color into the lighter color. So, And by blending you can circles, you can do X's, let me hold this down a little bit. All right, so we're just going to start blending that out. Working our way up. So just X's, you can do circles, you can however you want to do it. But the X's sometimes leave more of a, again, a feathered edge. We're not getting that hard brush line. But sometimes you really need to blend something out and it's easier to do circles. So we just come up to the corner, and again, if you want to bring some of this color down, you can pick it up, bring it down a little bit. All right, so let's go across, and I think that's about all we'll need for the sky. Okay, and I'm going to come down to the bottom. When we when we blend out the bottom, first I'm going to get this excess paint off my brush. Paper towels are key. <laughs> in this technique, I have enough brushes I don't have to wash while I'm painting, which is nice because you don't want to expose yourself to that thinner. So, have a lot of brushes if you can, and of course, paper towels to get this off. Now, we're going to blend out this section here. The center, I always blend out on the feathered edges first. That's the best. Instead of taking this dark paint and bringing it in, we're going to start here and work our way out. Oops, a little hair on there. Okay. Again, so we're just going to blend this out in the center. Okay, and then work your way further out. 
all this is going to be covered up, so I'm not too concerned about that, but if you want to knock those lines out, just turn your brush, instead of like this, turn it sideways, and that really will pull those little harsh lines out. All right, very good. And then all the way across. And again, we want this, this is our little sheen of light that's going to be on our water. And just blend the whole thing. There we go. Let's put our mountains in. Or should I drop a cloud? Maybe I should drop a cloud or two in there. What do you think? Hmm. I think it may be necessary. All right, yeah, let's put a little cloud in. I changed my mind. Okay, so we're going to take a one inch brush and we're going to pull out a little, a little bit of this titanium white. For titanium white, I really like this Gamblin Artist Series titanium white. It's very thick. I like the Gamblin 1980 titanium white too. Not quite as thick, and I like it for some uh, different effects, but for the clouds and uh, mountain, uh, it's always best, I find, with, with this. So we're just going to pop a little bit of cloud in here. So we're going to have a mountain up here. So start here, and we're just kind of doing little circles. That's all. Get a little more paint. paint that's about it for there and we're going to take our brush that we blended with actually I'm going to grab and just take the top corner and we're going to blend out the base of these just a little bit don't touch the tops Just a little bit of the base. All right. And then we'll kind of lift them up a little bit, a little fluff, a little circular strokes. There we go. And I'll come back and do a little bit more with those as well. We're gonna get a little more paint. This next line comes let me get a little more paint. A little bit in front. These clouds a little brighter. Come back with a two inch and just again just touch out little circles. Just gonna touch this out. We may end up covering a lot of this cloud. You'll see. And then again, we just gently, lightly lift it up. Beat the brush out just to get the paint. Okay, a little less paint, maybe these are a little more off. Just kind of spinning the brush a little bit. Maybe this is down here. A little more distant over there. Okay. Now these guys just kind of give them a little lift. Not much to do with those. Just a little bit of a lift there. Gently.
not. Oops. All right. So then sometimes I like to come through and maybe I'll take a fan brush. Well, let's see here. Let me find a little fan brush. And take a little bit of a dark color. You could do um, a little Prussian blue. Just taking like a little bit on the corner. Maybe mix out with a little bit of that mountain mix just to get a little darker bluish. And again, get most of the paint off of there. And then you can spin in some, so if you wanted to add some, some shadows, you could spin those in. Maybe the dark on the bottom here. Just a little bit. You could do it here and there. Just add a little variation in the cloud. Okay, and then you come back. I'm going to use a little blender brush for this. A little Bob blender. And just touch them. Not too much. Sometimes if you pull this Flatten out that bottom. Looks like the bottom of the cloud there. There we are, just gently. And then I think I'm going to come back. With this fan brush, and I'm going to go into some of the titanium white. Just kind of get it on the corner a little bit. And I'm going to touch up tops of these a little bit. Maybe where the sun, where the light is hitting. Maybe this one's a little darker back here. Something like that. Okay. Go back to my little Bob Blender. And just touch that down wee bit. Not much. I want to leave it pretty bright as if the sun is again hitting off of there. So then you can lift it a little bit. Just a touch. I'm barely touching. Beat the brush out. I'll tell you what, not much. Just barely. Just barely soften it up a little bit. You don't want to, you can blend them away when you get to this point, so be careful. And as always, step back. You always need to step back and take a look at, you know, your painting. It looks completely different when you're standing close to it, as opposed to when you take a step back. So I'm going to bring this out a little bit. Yes, that's better. Yeah, that's right there. And don't piddle them too much. Put them up there and live with it. All right, and I think we're gonna put a maybe a distant mountain here, and then a little bit closer one on this side. Um, so we will use a get my knife. And when you're doing these mountain outlines, you know, obviously Bob always uses his knife and, uh, but you don't have to, I mean, you can use, you know, you can use a filbert brush, um, you can use a fan brush, whatever you need. Sometimes I'll use a filbert to do the outline of the top and then come back with my knife and uh, scrape it out. But uh, it does not have to be a knife. You can use whatever brush works for you. And I've said before, if you can paint with a butter knife, paint with a butter knife. Okay. We're going to go in and we're going to put a mountain in. So, uh, for that, uh, we're going to put a little distant one here first. So I'm going to take some of this mountain mix, which is basically, it's a Bob Ross uh, paint that's just a mix of the darks. Um, so you can use it. I love it because you can use it for all of your underpainting. For this more distant mountain, we're going to add some white to it. So our color is just a little lighter, our base color. 
So we'll just kind of work that through like that. Maybe a little more dark. We'll see how it comes out. Okay, and then we're just going to cut across, get a little, little bit of paint. So you pull that out flat, just cut across, and you get a tiny little roll of paint. So let's see, we're going to maybe put this one about right, maybe here. Again, this one's going to be a little more off into the distance. So I'm going to try and keep these mountains from not growing. I have a bad habit. <laughs> when I start painting a mountain, it's probably my favorite thing to paint. And when I paint them, they can get big. And I've taken up the whole canvas. So I'm going to be very cautious here to leave room for my foreground. Okay, again, this is a little bit off into the distance. So it's so probably about all we're going to need. Oh, yeah, we can use this one. The one that we blended the canvas with. So I'm going to just grab this paint and pull it. Grab it and pull it. Pretty simple. Now what I like to do is wipe. Now my paper towel's handy. Get that extra paint off. Because we're trying to get this paint off of the canvas. This extra paint here. Pull this way. Bend to see the bristles bend. Let's go ahead and yank it. Close you can without going over. And again, we're not having a lot of uh, definition in the shapes here because this one's further off. It's going to look, look a little more pointy at the top. So we're just going to blend the base down and wiping that paint off. And that can just go off. We're going to cover that. Good. Blend that out on the bottom. So it already kind of has the appearance it's kind of sitting up in the in the mist. Now we're gonna come back, we're gonna grab our knife. Alright, so we're gonna highlight this uh, mountain just a little bit. It's a little bit off into the distance. So we're probably just gonna use some some blue. Um, I'm sorry, some white <laughs> with a little blue. Um, let me see here. Maybe we'll plop this over here. We don't need too much. Again, it's a little bit further off. Maybe we'll dump a little of this gray color in there too. So we're going to kind of pull that out. Let's see if we're in the camera. So yeah, we got this color here. We're going to pull this out. Just get it flat. And then just a little bit. We don't need much. Up here and gently touch in, in little strokes. At least that's the way I like to do it at first. It's these tight, short, choppy strokes. I'm going to leave a few of those little white ridges in there. I think that looks kind of cool. And again, we don't want too much on this dis distant one, just a touch. Okay, so let's keep moving here. Maybe this does. Oops. That is not what we want to do. We have a little dark color at the bottom, but that is fixable. Let's get rid of that. And actually, as you can see, my little scraping there left a nice little spot the mountain to come over that way. So we'll use that to our advantage. So touch that up a little bit. One more so right there. There we go. 
Again, this is off in the distance. Just grazing that knife, barely touching, barely touching. Maybe that just comes out of here and goes away. And I think that's probably all we're going to do for that back one. All right, so I'm going to dull this down a little bit here. A little too bright. That's an easy fix though. There we go. Okay. And then the shadow, again, not too much. I think we're just going to use some of this uh, underpaint that we had. And again, not too much back here. We're just going to drag down. spots. darker blue okay I think that's good I think that's all I'm going to do on that one we're just going to tap out the base a little bit I want this thing sitting so we're going to, want to diffuse the base it's already pretty diffused but we're just going to tap in the direction that the mountain is going. A little bit on this side. Okay, and then upward. And we're going to come up pretty high in this because we want this mountain to be very distant looking. So we're going to come up. Normally I would not come up this high when I do my foreground mountain. It will not be this high up. Again, just kind of come up. There. Good. Okay, now for this mountain, I'm going to use mainly my bigger knife, I do believe, but we shall see. Um, so, for this one, we're going to get this lighter color out of here. Put it to the side, we may need it later. Okay, and then we're going to come into this mountain mix and pull that out flat. Just pull it out and then get a little roll of paint on there. Now this next one, I think we're going to put maybe about right here. So it's, he's going to come up. Again. And I always try, I know we're a little pointy back here, but again, it's distant. When you get a little closer, you don't want to have these TP style mountains. Okay? You want them to move and uh, not just be come up to a point. Maybe this one will cut over in front of this one. Like that. We'll see. Well, he is now. <laughs> no choice okay and then maybe let's see um, maybe we'll have a little lump there oops and maybe we've got another one here and then maybe
maybe that guy just kind of drifts off. And then what I'm doing now is just scraping this excess paint off. Highlighting the mountain requires as little paint on the canvas as possible to get your paint to break like Bob would. So we're just going to scrape all that paint off. I like to do it carefully so I'm not messing up. <laughs> but we're just scraping it off, that's all. All that paint off. And again, if you have a question, please ask. I'll pop back there and look. So get all that paint off. Very good. Okay. Okay, so we're going to take that same brush. And we're just going to pull this color out. So just grab it and pull it. Grab it, bend them bristles, pull. And because we have this clear gel underneath, it allows that paint to move real nice and easy. So I'm going to wipe that paint off. I'm going to pull it down this way on this side. Being careful not to go up into the sky. I'm even going to wipe a little bit of this off with a paper towel. Take this paper towel and get a little bit of this paint off. There we are. That's all right. We can fix it. Again, with that liquid clear, today I'm using liquid clear. Um, sometimes I will use Bob Ross's liquid white. I'm sorry, I'm using Gamblin Clear Gel, uh, not Liquid Clear. And I like the Clear Gel. It's non-toxic, and I just like the feel of it. It, it uh, a little more than the Bob Ross uh, Liquid Clear. The Clear Gel just a little more. So I'll bring this one distinctly down in front of that back one. Okay. And then just blend out the base. Now are getting big on me again. I'm the king of overdoing a mountain. All right. And then at this point, if you want, if you wanted to see what your mountain's going to look like, you can use your brush to, uh, you know, set your highlight side and your peaks, you know, or your, your uh, shadow side. You know, maybe you want this to come down and then bend, you know, or maybe it, it goes straight down, however you want. And you can change it at any time, which is the best. Just blending that out. Just so it looks like it's hanging out in the air. All right. Wipe my brush off. Again, I'm gonna tone this edge down a little bit. Alright, very good. Okay, so we're going to go and we're going to highlight this mountain. When I'm highlighting my mountain, hold your knife loosely, okay? I I, I like two fingers. Um, sometimes, you know, I trail some fingers on here. But the, the thing with the, when you're highlighting your mountain is a very gentle touch. That little roll of paint that's on here, you want to just skim that paint down the mountain without really letting the knife touch. Once the, once the paint starts to run out, then you'll hear that knife. That's when you hear that. Okay, when you get down here, that's okay, like I was doing here. But uh, you really just want the, the, the knife, uh, the roll of, uh, blade, um, roll of paint touching your canvas, not necessarily uh, the knife blade. So I'll show you here. We're going to take this white and pull it out flat. And I'm going to put just a little bit of that mountain mix, just a touch. Give it some little bit of darker streaks. So we'll pull that out. Okay, then we're going to cut across. You get a little roll of paint. And again, when I'm starting my mountain, I like to uh, do a little bit shorter strokes. Um, to me, the shorter strokes 
give you a little more of a jaggedy, rocket, rocky look. Um, but if you're more comfortable doing a longer stroke, that's fine. Whatever works for you. I mean, if you take your shoe and you can do a mountain with your shoe, hey, all the power to you. Um, but this this works for me, and I found when I teach with my beginners, this is very effective. Um, so, again, just we're going to come up, touch just above. We want to cover the edge. We don't want to... Our light's coming from this way, so this is all going to be highlighted on this side, uh, on the especially on the edges. So, again, just gently touch. Okay, and I like just get, to get this line started here. Just drag that off. Okay, get a little more paint. Maybe come up to this little peak here. Just gently. And you see, is when I get to the end, you hear when the paint runs out, that's when you hear that hitting the canvas. And that's what you want. So I'm going to touch this up a little bit here in the center. There we go. All right, so we're going to keep going here. All right, so maybe here we're going to start now. I've got, if you notice, I put these little bumps here and there because they're great places to start your stroke. You know, we don't have a wide spot where we can come sideways. So I put these little bumps here, here, because that's a really good spot to get my knife in. <laughs> so anyways, so touch and then gently. Leave dark spots. See, I like to get that first line. You see we have a little dark section here. So what I'll do, I won't cover that up. Come back here and get another little roll of paint. And then maybe I'll come, like maybe right here. Not covering all that dark, but kind of touching them. And then starting again. See that? See, now I have a little ridge. This ridge comes down, it goes up, it comes down this way. So we'll leave that. And we'll come here. As we come down the mountain, I have to open the face of the knife more and come out. Okay, now we'll come over here. Maybe this comes down like this. A little crooked. Okay, I like that. And again. And then maybe it comes over like that. I've said this before, building a mountain is like is like putting a puzzle together, except for as the painter, you get to decide the size of the pieces and where the pieces go. So it makes life a lot easier. Okay, so let's come up here. I'm going to touch that a little bit. There. I do need to cover this tip just a little bit. There we go. Again, maybe this one's coming this way a wee bit, dropping straight down, and then it's going to turn over like that. Come here. I think we may have this mountain come down. Yeah, I see what I'm going to do. Let's see. paint and again very important to step back before you keep going I've learned the hard way you must step back like at this point it's best if I step back 10 15 feet and take a peek at that so yeah I like that so far coming along nicely Okay, maybe just a little more here. Bringing this over. Okay, he's going to come underneath like that. Get 
I like that. All right, very nice. Now we're going to go over to the other side. We're going to do the shadow. Okay, so now we're going to jump around here and we're going to hit these uh, the shadow side. So for that, again, we'll probably just, I think I'm going to use a little, this time a little phthalo blue. So I'll go into some phthalo blue and a little bit, of, or I'm sorry, Prussian blue and a little bit of white. And we want a marbled color. We don't want one straight flat color. So I've got you know, all these variations. And if it works out just right, when we drag that down, we'll get those same variations there. We hope. So just cut across. And all those little variations are in here. So when I'm doing the, sh the shadow side, the big thing for me is to follow this top edge. Just to follow that. The rest of it, Eh, we can fix all that, but let's make, try and make sure we get this top edge. And I want to reiterate, the shadow side is far less important uh, than the highlight side, because it's the shadow. So in shadow, the things are dark. You can't see well in the dark. So whatever's over here, you can just say, ah, oh, that's a divot, that's a rock, that's a, that's a, what, it's a weed, because <laughs> it's in shadow. Nobody knows. So we're going to come up here and, again, follow the outline here. Gently. Like that. I need a little more white in that color. We're going to put a little more white in there. Lighten it up a little bit. And when I do my, uh, my, my mountains, you'll see, I, I, I'll keep going back and forth between highlight and shadow. I'm just getting started on this one. Uh, I go back and, and, and add things as I go. So we're going to come there. We go. That's a little better. Just let the paint fall right off. It's grazing. All right, get a little more of this paint. Come in here. Like that. And I see this coming around like this. We're going to keep moving on the shadow side. Touch a little bit in here. And again, don't overdo it. Okay, so now I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to take a little bit of white, a little bluish whitish, and I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of, of color through here just like there are some high points on the shadow side that are catching some sun and you just need to be real delicate miss many times get closer get closer get closer and then eventually see you get a little touch see that just graze it and to me it looks almost like there's little wisps of snow there we go just little points of, little high points that are catching again. The trick is, when you're doing this, miss. At least, you know, for me it works that way. I like to miss, get closer and closer until it just grazes. When it grazes, and if you hit it hard like there, you can fix that. That's no biggie. Because that's the problem. Sometimes you're going to touch and then you, ugh, and you get this big blob of paint like that. But that can be fixed. Okay, we're just going to touch that up a little bit, and it goes away. Okay, wipe off my knife. Okay, and another thing I like to do too, and I know if you guys have watched me before, is to come back and get some of that darker underpaint that we had. And then do the same thing here. And now we're going to drizzle in some darker spots, some deeper crevices. And it's just random. It's whatever the whatever the canvas pulls off, that's where it's supposed to be. Because you it's hard to determine. See that? Just those little spots. 
just adds so much detail on the back half of your mountain. Just these little things. Oops, a little heavy, a little heavy. We can fix it. And you can go back and forth on this. I'm going to go back with a little bit of that white. When it gets a little heavy, just come back and just touch it a little bit. And then, of course, step back. It's very important. So now we're going to come in in some of these sections. I don't like to do a lot. A lot of these I like to leave as they are, but we will certainly come in in some spots. And you, know, you can kind of, sometimes the smaller knife is better for this, but just kind of, you're just really touching. Maybe there. Maybe that boy comes down a little bit like that. And that just instantly adds volume uh, to, your, to your mountain. Maybe here. So wherever you add some of those holes, sometimes a smaller knife is a little bit easier for this. But let, where it gave you, the, you gave yourself these little holes, that's where you put your, your paint in. And you can come back with darker paint too and drizzle some of that down as well. And again, I'm just touching. See, and now i got some deeper crevices. Now, I like my smaller knife for a lot of these too. Get your smaller knife in here, it fits a little better. And you can touch down some of these. If you feel they're too dark, you can just come in with a little bit of light. Just to put a little bit on the edge. And we can kind of add this little light. Just lighten it up a little bit in some spots. You don't have to. Um, I also like to take the small edge of the knife and come up to some of these top spots. And you can do it with the heel of the knife. Like take the take the heel of the knife, get a little paint on it. And then come up to some of these tips here and bet bring it back this way. Just a wee bit. It's almost like there's you know just a little bit of a cap that's coming over. Just here and there. It just kind of rounds off the edge a little bit. You can even pull it over like that. Here and there. There's a little pull. Right there. A little pull. A little pull. Just kind of rounds the top a little bit. What do you think? See the difference there? Just a little bit of a rounded edge. And again, I'm going to come down here and we're going to again, bring some of this white just over the lip a little bit. Just a little. It's too heavy. No problem. Just like some color variation there too. Just to define this edge a little bit and this slope. Break this up a little bit. Okay, that's good. And I can come back and noodle on these mountains forever. I mean, if I'm just painting by myself here at home, you know, I'll, like I said, I'll walk out of the room 
come back, make an adjustment here, there, add this, add that. All right, so I'm going to take my two inch brush and we're going to tap and diffuse the base. It's very important to not tap straight across. Then you chop your mountain off. You want to come up a little bit, okay? A little lower, then me and follow your angles. Follow the angles. So this one comes like this. See that? So we're just diffusing that. See, we're coming this way. This one's going more this way. So we're going to bring it that way. See that? Then over here, I'll do this last. We're going to come here. And again, we're just diffusing the base. Different start at different spots. I like to have my paper towels handy. Because you will pick up, especially this dark color, you're going to pick up a lot of that paint, get that brush cleared off. And just tap again, just tap, 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 tap. And we can bring this as far as we want it with this tap. Look. Okay. And then take that same brush and go against the grain of what you tapped gently, just to take those tap marks off out. This way, come up here. We can even come up here a little bit. And then this side would go this way. Just gently. And mist all that out. Take a little bit of this color. Let me see this here. Tap this. Bring that all the way in front. Gently, gently bring this down. There we go. Okie doke. So let's keep moving. Now we're going to come into the foreground. So what I think I'm going to do, let me get my little filbert brush. Sometimes when I'm painting, um, I have a rough idea what I want to do down here. So sometimes it's nice to do just a little bit of an outline. So I think I'll take some of this dark color. Um, so I know I'm going to, just so I have a rough guide of where I'm going, um, so we're going to have a line of trees, let me see here, that are going to come up, probably start around here, and they'll come up and get a little taller, get a little taller, get a little taller here, okay, and maybe stop there, and then we'll have another set of trees, maybe that cut that off here, and our bank, maybe we'll go something like this. A bank like that on that side and then on this side maybe this will come down and cut that off right there maybe it'll come like this and maybe this guy will come down a little bit like that to there and then come down well, maybe a little further and then maybe that will open up to there. So we can, you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Just kind of, and I'll fill all this in. But just getting some dark down. So I have a rough idea. Get rid of some of this paint off my brush. And again, I know that looks terrible, but we... Just getting a rough idea of where this land's going to be. Okay, good. See, now I have a uh, you know rough outline in my head, and I know exactly where I'm going to put my stuff. Okay, I'm going to grab a fan brush. So I'm going to get a little fan brush, and we are going to go into some of this mountain mix. And again, the mountain mix is just a mix of all Bob's dark colors. Uh, I do believe it's uh, Thalo blue, blue, Prussian blue, maybe black, uh, crimson, a little sap green. Um, just a mix of the darks. 
and they put it in one tube and it saves you a lot of time and mixing. So I really like it. So again, just load up that fan brush and we're going to come back here and we're going to have a little row of trees that starts way off in the distance. And these are the, the Bob style, you know, crush down type where he, you know, just pulls straight down like this. Um, I don't go as crazy fast as Bob did because I like to make sure that they're nice and neat. I'm a little picky about that. Um, so, and I like to kind of do a guide. So I might start back here with a couple and then kind of work my way. Just, I know they look like fence posts, so we'll fill it in. But this is just a guide for me so I can see how big they're getting and then I can make changes if necessary. Maybe come up like this. And I know it doesn't look like much now, but it will. It'll be just fine. So maybe this, these come up okay, like that. Now we'll fill in. And again, just using the top corner of that brush and pushing down. These go off into nothing. The biggest thing with these trees is to make sure the, the base part is filled in with paint. Because it's a forest and you can't really see through these trees. So we're just going to, again, work our way forward. Vary your heights. Some short some tall. Try and make sure they're going straight up and down. I know sometimes I, I, I do. I, I find myself slanting one way or another. So it's really important to step back and make sure your trees are going straight. And it's pretty easy to fix. You can just add more on top that are a little more straight. Um, so again, we're just going to drop these boys in. Varying the heights. And then down here, we just want to mush and fill it in. The tops we want distinct. Down here, doesn't matter. Because this is just dark base here. So I'm using and then when you get here, you just turn that brush sideways. And then lift up. Looks like they're way off. Okay, so again, fill in. The important thing is to fill down here. We don't want to have holes here really. It's going to be pretty dense. Okay, and then once I get that filled in, then I like to come back, get more color, and really chisel the edge. Bring it through this paint and wiggle it, so you get a nice chiseled edge, real straight. And then you can add some real clean tops. Turn it over, use the other end. Load it up again. These are all pretty good, so I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, very good. Now while we're while we're here, I'm gonna take, I think here I will use a two inch brush or one inch brush. Let me see here. I think I'll use this blender. This thing sheds a lot of hair, 99 cents. But we're going to come here and we're going to pull this down. So we'll decide where our bank's going to be. And I think here will be about right here. And we just bend those bristles and pull down. See that? Again, pull down. A little less here. A little less here. Because that's going off into the distance. So we pull this down a little more. This is going to be covered. A little further here. Okay, good. I'm going to wipe that off because it got some paint. And then we're going to come across. Just across. And you can bend these if you want. Maybe the water's a little more calm. Today? We don't know. There we go. Enjoy sharing my knowledge of painting and uh, it's a lot of fun. I like to teach and uh, uh, completely uh, really enjoy painting. Um, it's been a pleasure in my life to discover how to paint and come down here and just have so much fun with it. I'm going to bring this up a little bit more.
a little further. A little more paint. And that's going to be covered. Let's go back to our little blender and just pull this down. And across. Gives us that nice shimmery look. I think I'm going to bring this over just a little bit more back here. Let's see if it comes back. There we go. There we go. That's going to be covered, but I just want to make sure I overlapped enough. Very nice. Over here, we are going to put in, let me get my, I think we'll use my oval brush. Find a good oval brush with the rounded top. A couple of these Bob Ross oval brushes are a little oddly shaped. <laughs> so, we're going to put some trees on this one side. So, I'm just going to use my oval brush and just load up both sides. All right, so let me see here. So, I think about maybe here we will have a bigger tree. him he's gonna have some bushes cover up that corner right there Maybe that comes down might even take this tree up a little bit higher no no I think I'll leave him there I think I'm going to put, take my fan brush, if I can find it, there she is, that had the dark, and I'm going to plop in a tree. using the corner of the brush a lot of paint in the brush a lot of paint up in this bristles here really loaded up and we're just going to touch let me make a little cleaner top okay. and just using the corner touch and we're going to go side to side The end and I'm actually going to take this bigger tree he's going to come in front of this guy a little bit and then down here we can just darken all this in I'm actually going to use my use my filbert brush a little bit for the Line. 
stuff like that. All right, very good. Now we'll come in here and just darken all this in. Don't worry about spilling paint down there. It's all going to be reflections anyways. So we're just, as Bob would say, you can do this with a paint roller. Just darkening all this in. Okay, and we can do the same on this side. We're going to put some trees here over here too. But for now, we can also just add some... Just putting color in. All right, very nice. I think we're going to bring this guy a little taller. here and touch this up a wee bit right over here darken this in we're going to come back and add some land back here but I got going with this foreground so okay so let's take our knife I'm going to go with the small knife and let's see what we want to do here all right, we're just going to take some of this uh, Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of white. Could even put a little bit of ochre in there. Even a little dark sienna, or burnt umber, I'm sorry. Just a little bit of all of those colors. Again, a little white. And get that marbled effect this very good pull it out so you got that nice marbly effect just a little bit of paint I'm going to come over here I'm just going to drag a little bit a little bit of land rocks. We'll get a couple that are a little taller. Just come over like that. Maybe a stack of rocks. And then on this side, pull down a little bit. Not even much at all. 
Maybe take a little dark paint, push it up there. Just kind of looks like a stack of rocks there. At least we hope so. Tree's growing. take our hand brush again, load it with some paint, and maybe back behind here, off in the distance, maybe we got a couple little evergreens that are popping through, a little further away. Kind of off there. I might even use my my little filbert for those distant ones. There's one here. Again, these are these are pretty far off. to go slow on these little ones. Again, these are kind of back off. You really... They're very far off. I'll stick one here that's kind of peering through maybe. Again, these are just kind of in the distance, sticking, sticking up. Okay. And maybe even maybe we got a bigger one right here, just to cover this edge a little bit. We'll make this guy even a little bigger. Is what we'll do. Way we can. It's always nice on these edges to have it covered. I found uh, we can fill that in with highlights. Very good. All right, so we're going to load up our filbert. We're going to come on the other side and then load it and get a nice. I like to get that chiseled edge. Lots of paint. Okay, so maybe these trees are going to be a little more in the foreground. So maybe we'll start this one here. And I like to do just a little guide. So I know where I'm tapping. Maybe a little more paint. All right, so again, load that bristle, brush up. Okay, and then we're going to start here. And again, just tapping. Start. And then as we go down... A little bit left, a little bit right. Need a lot of paint. We're going over this mountain, so it's hard to. Might need to add a little thinner. Let me add a little paint thinner. Because painting over that mountain, it's a lot of paint under there. And with all that paint, you need a thinner paint. Then sticks thick. To go over that so let's try this again i'm going to extend it a little bit a little more room to work with there that's better just touch and as we come down we're going to work our way side to side Good. Clean this up a little bit. I 
Come next to him. Maybe this guy starts about here. Oh, covering up that mountain. Terrible. A little more of that thinner. Just a touch. And then smack it out. Even touch a paper towel. Because a little thinner goes a long way. Don't need too much. Okay. Let's come up here. And touch. Bend those bristles down a little bit. A little more paint to get over this mountain. There we are. It comes a little closer. All right, so here, maybe this one's a little shorter. Maybe he's back a little bit. Give him a little guide. All right. So with that thin paint, let's come here and get a touch. A little more paint, a little more thinner. Smack it off. Touch paper towel. Back into your dark. Good. And we'll separate those with highlights. Thank you, Redmondi. I appreciate it. Hey, Lisa Marie. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Okay, let's keep moving. Maybe over here. Here. In. Maybe he's going to be crooked a little bit that way, not too much. All right. Sorry if my head's in the way. And just get wider as you go lower. I like these filbert because it has a nice hangy down type feel. And again, the bottoms and all that will separate when we highlight everything. We don't. I'm not sure we can decide which tree is going to be in the front, which is going to be a little further back. All right, more paint. All right, so now we're going to have a couple more. Maybe these guys are a little bit closer. Starts here. Oops. Like that. All right, so let's come up to this one. All right, and then sometimes it is best to go a little faster. So we'll just kind of, again, when you start to get thin in that color, reload. And we're going over this mountain, so it's, I'm picking up a lot of that underpaint. So again, you gotta dip into that thinner and then go back into your color, but just not too much. I kind of like to start in the center and then go out. And again, we'll decide where the bottoms will be. I'm not sure yet. All right, back into our paint. Again, this is just the underpaint. Then we're going to highlight all this stuff. So maybe this guy... Maybe this guy starts up here. Something like that. Let me step back. And then 
maybe this guy is all the way up here. And he's going to come down this way. Very good. Warp color. tree back this way a little bit and again the bottoms we're not worried about we'll straighten all that out later all right very good now come up here to this one and we'll straighten out the tips of these as well a little more thinner last section of mountain a little thinner Turn the brush over. And we're just filling this in. As Bob said, you can take a paint roller. And again, we'll decide where all these end. I'm not sure. Of this paint okay now what we're going to do here since we got these big trees they will reflect a little bit so we're going to go like this just the opposite so now i'm pushing the here i push the bristles down for the reflections i'm going to push up so that the leaves follow in the opposite direction so it doesn't have to be exact this is very inexact science here the reflections are going to be Leave a little blue between them. They're all going to go off the canvas. Good. Excellent. So we've got to come back here. We're going to cut in a water line back here. I haven't done that yet. I want to go back here and cut in some water lines. Off here into the distance. So I'm going to take a little bit of... And honest with you, some people like to use the liquid white for this. I usually just use just a little bit of uh, titanium white. Just a little bit. So we'll come here and just kind of make sure that your water line's got to be level. Don't do them. Even though this line goes back, we don't want our water lines going like this. They will always remain level. So they're, as we go up, we still, you know, go... Uh, horizontally across not in this fashion but in this fashion now it can move a little bit but I see a lot with beginners where it goes like this and that makes it look like the water's running off your canvas so again let's just start here and just dig them in and as you go a little higher like that and then right off and those are a little heavy but we can tam we can tamper that down. If you get a water line that's too heavy, just clean your your knife off. Go back to it and rub it a couple times. She'll go right away. But sometimes they're nice to be heavy. You can get a little ripple out there. Okay. And by doing this, now you have the indication that it's not a straight bank. You know, it cuts in a little bit, like back in here, back here, comes out a little bit, and then off into nothing. So that's all I'll do with that, really. I think we're good with that. Okay, let's keep moving forward. All right, I want to, before I get too much further ahead, is this reflections that we pulled down. We're just going to do this gently, and then pull this little bank down, too. And this one here. Okay, so pull them straight down. Straight down is very important. 
okay, and then gently across. And we'll do the same thing over here. Pull this down. Might need a heavier brush. This brush ain't cutting it. Let's get a heavier brush. There we go. We got it back to our two inch. Let's bend those bristles. And then this is off of there. Grab some of that color. Pull it down. Let me add a little color on there. Add a little more paint to my brush. That's better. Oops. A little heavy. A little heavy. Easy to take away. A heavy spot, just rub it out a little bit and then you can Blend it down again. All right. That's better. And across. Straight across. Right here, we'll pull that down a wee bit. And across there. Bend those, wiggle them, just by pulling. Very cool. Okie doke. Every time I come to this tree, I make her a little bit bigger. Very good. Okie doke. Now, I have a lot of wet paint here, um, so I like to take a shop towel and try and uh, get some of it absorbed. Especially on these trees, which I used, um, on these trees I used a lot of uh, thinner, so you want to kind of carefully, very carefully, touch. And it just soaks up a little bit. A guy like Kevin Hill will, will, you know, actually stick it on there and let it sit for a while. Well, I don't have time for that. <laughs> so, it just makes the highlighting process a little bit easier. So, I just like to dab it. Again, just a little bit, just to get some of that super wet paint absorbed a wee bit. Just touch it up a little bit. Good, and we'll do the same thing on this side. Just to absorb some of that wet paint. Because it does make highlighting so much easier when you pick up some of this loose paint without smudging everything out. Good. Okie doke. Let's move forward. So, uh, I'm going to add some trunks. Now we're going to put some tree trunks in here. So for that, just this little uh, brown mix we have with a little bit of white. And a little bit of blue. <laughs> Just pull that out. Wipe my knife off. Paper towel. Okay, and just cut across. 
get a tiny roll of paint. And basically here, we're just going to touch in some spots. Right here, see that? Just touch and get out. Sometimes they can get thick on you, but we can we can fix it. We can fix anything. Okie doke. Maybe this one you can see here, there, and try and bury them. Oops. Again, we're just touching. You can even add a dead one or two or three. There's a couple stumps back there. Who knows? Now we got a mini forest. <laughs> we'll come over to this side, do the same thing with this guy. Touch. Touch, touch, and you can even touch in a little pole. Eh, you probably wouldn't notice much back here on these guys. Maybe just a little bit. Oops. That's not what we wanted, but he's fixable. Let me just come back with our dark. Maybe I can cover that right up. Because that sucked. <laughs> all right so we got a few tree trunks and I'm going to come in here with my filbert brush let me get my smaller one okay so with this filbert brush the filbert brush I'm going to go through some brown it's going to be on one side of the brush okay and then some of this I'm sorry this I should say the white and the brown mix on one side and then we're going to go through this Van Dyke straight on the other side so we've got a little bit of the whiter I mean go get a little more white okay. so we have a little whiter color on one side and the darker color on the other side so our lights come from this way we're going to put a trunk in this boy so we want the lighter side on here the darker color over here. So maybe we'll start up here. And we get both sides of that in one stroke. And then I think I'll use my liner brush just to add a few limbs I'm gonna find what I did with it oh there she is so we'll go into a little thinner into that paint a little more thinner get it runny turn it turn 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 I don't like to kind of get a little bit of it off. Sometimes it's a little heavy. You got to be careful. So we'll just add a couple limbs here. So maybe this comes off. It's a little runny. I think that's it. But I just want to make these top branches darker. I don't like. Cover that up. Okay, very good. All right. up a little bit good. 
Okay. Now, the next section. We're going to highlight this stuff. I do want to add a little bit of dark. A few spots here. Just darkening some of these spots where the thinner got a little light. Enough with that. I think I will try my filbert brush on these highlights. Okay, so let's get some highlights in. I think we're going to start with this tree. And I'm going to dip into some liquid white. So I put some liquid white in my filbert and I'm going to set it kind of to the side here. Okay. And then we're going to take, I have some dark on this brush, so I'm going to go through this yellow. It's got some liquid white, so because of the dark, go up and grab a little of that dark. Automatically gives us a cool green. You can even go up here and grab a little of this blue. And go into that. And it gives it a really cool green. Get a little liquid white. So we need this paint thin so it sticks on that thicker paint. So I just kind of push and get a little ridge of paint. Let's see what we got color-wise here. So I'm going to come up here. It's going to be a little different for me, highlighting like this. More paint. This paint has to be very thin. As you can see here, I'm really thinning this down. So let's see here. Maybe this guy down here. A little darker on this side. I'm just picking out individual clumps. Working our way down. I'm leaving a lot of dark areas. It's really important to leave the dark. Then I'll come back through, get a little more straight yellow. I want that straight yellow. A touch. A few 
through these little sections where the sun's hitting. Just a few spots. light on this side and dark back in here again just going back through this yellow Again, it's so important to step back and take a look at it before you move on. See where you need to make some adjustments. We'll build this up a little bit here. Just to round that boy off a little bit. Let's go to our little filbert. And with this filbert, let me wipe it off. Might need to clean it. Okay, so we just need to highlight this tree here. So, and then the other guys on the other side. So for this tree, We'll go into that same highlight color, maybe a little darker, since it's kind of behind here. So we're just going to touch gently. Stay on the top half. Just a couple spots. It's darker down here. Then you can go in with some dark color and touch up any spots that you maybe over highlighted. Just what I like to do is come back, add some dark in there, and little spots. And this is back off in the corner here, it's not going to get a whole lot of light. Okay, so these guys back here, they're not going to need much, so we'll just touch this a little bit. Be very dark back here, so just a few little highlights. Anything you ever do, chuck the dark back in. Again, this I just want a couple, just a couple little things back here, not much. Probably should have just left them. That's all right, we're going to put stuff over top of those. All right, very good. Now, go to our other filbert brush that we had rolling. And we're going to come over and attack these trees. So we're going to push, push our filbert and get a little bit of ridge of paint on the edge of the bristles. Okay. So again, get a little ridge of paint up on there. And we'll come back here and gently touch in a few highlights.
there. More liquid white into that little green color. Might even add a little sap green to that, get it a little bit darker. Again, getting that little ridge of paint on the edge of your bristles. Come up here, gently touch, touch. Maybe this one's a little darker. You got a little more sun, he's a little more shadow. Okay, come up with this next guy. Good. Maybe this next guy gets a little more sun. We'll see. Maybe this guy comes a little further down than the other ones do. See, now we've brought him into the foreground a little bit. All right, now this guy right here, maybe a little more yellow for him. Okay. Touch. Oops. More liquid white. Darker down here. Get lower, we get a little darker. I do like using the filbert on these trees, it's a really cool effect. Here. A little more yellow. Darker down. Okay, and then this guy in the end is going to be a little brighter. Oh, needs some more yellow. Try again. Darker down to the base. Maybe he comes in front a little bit. Now we've varied the, the heights. This guy's sticking back there a little bit. He's coming a little forward. We'll put some bushes and things in front of these. So I'm not too worried. We'll darken this up a little bit. He's got a little sunshine on him. And I might add a little more sunshine in some of these other bushes or trees. So I'm going to go straight yellow, straight yellow, and just touch. Just a little bit. Just a couple spots where the sun might be shining through. Oh, 
Okay, good. That was dumb. Cover it right up. And again, I still want to come over here. I feel like I still need a little more brightness on this side. So now we're going to put in some of the bushes and the things up front here that will really finish her all off. All right, now we're going to highlight some bushes. Okay, I am going to dip into some liquid white and get that on my palette again. We're just going to take that liquid white and like just set it off here to the side. Okay, now let me decide what I'm going to do. Let's take a little bit of, I think I'm going to dip a little bit into this phthalo green. A little phthalo green, and then we're going to bring that down here to the yellow. So we're going to pull that out. Add a little sap green to that. Maybe a little bit of that mountain mix as well. Get a good amount of paint, liquid white, yellow, a little phthalo green, yellow. Okay, and then we're going to tap, okay? And when you tap, see how I've thinned that paint down. This is important. What I like to do is splay out them bristles. See that? I like to get them splayed out. Tap here into your color. And when you get that, see the bush in the paint? When you get that, that's what you got on your bristles, and that's what you want. So again, this is just a little phthalo green, yellow, green, and I pulled a little mountain mix too. Okay, so that's what you want. When you get them bushes in your paint, that's what you got in your bristles. So we got a nice full load of paint in the bristles. So let's come down here. And maybe this big bush is going to be about right here. So literally... Because this paint is thinned, all I need to do is touch, and I'll get a nice thousand head bush in one touch, hopefully. Touch. Touch. Touch your way around, however you'd like, and then when we get on the back side of this, a little less... that okay maybe the next one same thing but add a little more green again tap until you get the little brush the little bush in your paint okay and maybe this maybe this guy's back here a little bit so tap maybe he comes over the trunk okay and then darker on this back side so darker here not as much pressure. And then a little more. Maybe we tap a little more. And have like the... This is sticking up a little bit. Maybe he cuts down. In front of that one. Like that. So I like to... Now because I have my yellow... You know, this yellow greenish brush out. So I'm going to use this. Uh, for most of these colors. So let's go back in, we'll tap out some more, maybe in this one, I like to change the flavor up a little bit, so maybe we take a little bit of, uh, let's take a little bit of this Indian yellow and come down here, just to change that flavor and then tap that in, a little bit of that Indian yellow. Again, get those bristles 
display down. We're going to get a little more of that Indian yellow. Tap, tap, tap. Get the bris the br uh, the bush in your paint. Okay, and then we'll come up here. Maybe this boy's down here a little bit. Covering up the feet of this tree. And he comes, maybe he cuts in front. This little dark section here separates the two bushes. So always use a little bit of dark. Leave a little bit of dark. And then layer your bushes um, if possible. Okay, now I'm going to go into a little bit of the yellow ochre. And go into that same pile down here. So I got a little ochre. Got a little everything down here. A little ochre, a little uh, phthalo green, yellow. Okay. Maybe we'll come over here. Maybe he's right here. Again, just a little bit of a different flavor on the color. A little darker on the back half. Like that. Very nice. And you want to layer those bushes in. All right, now I'm going to come in. It's time for a red bush. Got to have a red bush. And when I do a red bush, I like I don't like to thin with liquid white because um, it makes it a pink bush. So if you want a nice red bush, what you want to do is use a little bit of paint thinner to thin your color. Just a little bit of thinner. So let me get my... Actually, I'm going to take, I'm going to clean off a brush. So I'm getting an overload of dirty brushes. So I'm going to wipe this one off. And I'm going to dip it in my thinner real quick. Pardon me. Clean it off. Shake it out. And I'm going to wipe it out really good on this paper towel. The residual thinner that's in here is going to be enough for my red. Whenever you're thinning paint to do highlights with thinner, be careful because just this residual thinner will be enough. See, that's enough. So I'm going to tap here. Okay. All right, so we're going to put a little red bush down here. It's going to go. It's a little red splasher there. Okay. I'm going to grab one of my oval brushes. When you're doing your bushes, it's nice to use a couple different brushes to give you a little bit of a variation. Um, so we're going to go through the liquid white. And let's see what we want to do here. Maybe some... Maybe we'll do some ochre and some red. Tap, maybe a little more on the redder side. Tap, 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 get that little bush. Okay, then we'll come over here. Little red one there. A little more into the ochre. So a little ochre with that same color. Just we had the red. We had the Indian yellow. Now I'm just taking that same dirty brush. Maybe this boy lives right here. Just tapping. Good. And we're going to go back to our brush with the greens and the yellows. Tap that in there. Maybe this guy lives right out of here. Okay. 
Okay. And then this one's going to be a little more yellow. And I'm just playing with colors here. So a little more straight yellow with that green. grassy thing going down a little further off good now we can maybe grab a little more green we're going to darken this color up a little bit and let's see here maybe it comes through here Good. We can also reflect some of this down into the water. Do the same thing here with this bush. Just kind of doing the opposite. Like that. So all these little details at the end it may really make a difference uh, when you're painting, as you'll see when I get done. Just put a little bit of that underneath. Okay. Brush is seizing up on me. I don't like that at all. Let's get rid of that. It's gone. Look at joke. Go back to our greens. And we're just going to touch in a few spots down here. Let these greens wrap around. Cool colors. Him in there. Reflect him down. Good. And again, some more of this green. I'm just going back and forth between these different colors. A little more green. A little dark. Or a little light. A little darker. down same thing here kind of grassy area all right moving along we're almost there okie doke Tell you what, let's put let's put a rock in. We haven't had a rock here. So for the rock, we got our dark already. So I'm just going to take a little more dark, maybe over here. I'm going to put a little shape in. And it doesn't matter. It's all dark here anyway. So maybe it's like that. Good. Wipe the knife off. All right, then we'll come. We'll get a little bit of white. Chuck it in with this uh, sienna umber mix up here. Pull it out flat. Wipe my knife off. And just cut across. Get a little bit of that. Those mixed colors will be right. Sorry, be right on your your knife. So let's come over here. And we're just going to, for me, when I'm doing a rock, I just think of, I'm going to put a highlight where I think the sun's going to hit. The rest I leave dark. And hopefully, it looks like a rock. 
So, <laughs> so I just come in here, and we're just just like I do on the mountains. So you just kind of kind of pull. See that? And leave a little dark, and then pull again. Maybe angle down. See that? And but just by doing that, it gives the appearance of a rock. It's kind of neat. Not too much. See, now it looks like we got a lot of rocky, jaggy type. Maybe a little more here. Oops. Something like that. I think kind of look like a rock. <laughs> now let's put some stuff around him. Maybe we'll go a little heavier on the yellow. Again, that same. I love this top corner of the one inch brush. It's just a wonderful bush brush. So maybe this one kind of comes over in front of here. There we go. And then we can reflect this down as well. And also reflect this, freshen that color up a little bit. And we're going to want to reflect a little bit of that rock. So what you do is just take a little bit of that rock color and kind of go back this way against the grain. Now it looks like a little bit of that rock color is also in the water. Okie doke. Very good. And maybe this, maybe we need another little bushy. I'll tell you what, let's get a red bush in here. Make sure I got all my yellows in. Maybe here. Okay, and then we're going to go into this red. With this green bush brush. Let's put a red bush in here on the shoreline. There we go. Look at that. Woo! That'll get you. You touch this guy up too. Okay. bit of red highlight right there. Little red flowers. I like that. And reflect that in. Okay, we need a little more green over here in the water. We're almost there. So let's see here. Got to punch in some water lines. So we're going to take our knife, a small knife. Okay, you know what? Down here, let's go. I'm going to get a little, little bit of white, a little bit of white, titanium white. Whoops. First. I need to touch this up a little bit. I need to extend this green to the end. And then reflect that down too. There we go. Okay. Now the old water line. So we'll come about 
here. This is really key to making your reflections. Oops, shoot. Should have pulled these down first. Oops. It's all right, not too late. So watch here. We're going to take these reflections gently. You barely touch. I'm just going to drag them down a wee bit just to distress it. Not much. See that? That's about it. You go too much, you distress them. Okay, so like that, and then gently across. Gently. Good, that's better. Okie doke. Alright, let's continue with the water lines. Maybe that dries back into there. Okay. Comes out a little bit. Something like that. If you put pressure on the edge of the blade, you get these little uh, uh, wedges, you know, you know, rises up a little bit and gives you a little bit of a ripple kind of look. All right, so let's go over here. Same thing on this side. We'll put a little, actually, we'll put one back here too. Right here. That kind of goes off into nothing there. It's a little heavy, a little heavy. We can get rid of that. Just rub it a couple times, and we're good. Okay, now come over here, just a little bit here. Use the heel of my knife. Just like you're cutting right through the canvas. That one's back there, that's good. And come up here. Like that. Okay, and then this one we're going to drop down a little bit to make it look like the banks are getting lower, which is what we want. See that? Oh, shoot, didn't pull these down either. All right, I'm getting there, people. <laughs> I think I need a drink. All right, so let's pull these down gently, gently, barely touching. Barely touching, just distressing it. Okay, like that, and then gently across, gently across, gently. Good. All right, now we can continue with our water lines. Maybe this is a little lower. And off. And those water lines, when you have the water lines with the reflections and that dark color that gives it that glossy glassy looks like water <laughs> and it doesn't look like that until you finish might even come back here and throw in a little bit of some highlights in the far far back let me wipe off my my brush and i'm going to go into some of this green some of the little darker green because i don't want it too bright well, maybe, let's see here. So we're just going to come back here. We're just going to touch in just a couple things here and there. Just using the top corner of this little fan brush. And then as we get back, it's going to get a little lighter, a little smaller. Don't get it in your water. Get a little taller as we get to the foreground. And this doesn't have to be super detailed. This is just some bushes that are sitting in front of these trees. That goes off to nothing back there. 
and just set some of those rocks in a little bit. Good. Okay. Now I think I'm going to sign this. And like I said, I always like to come back to these um, once I've walked away from it and make some changes, fix some things here or there. So for today, we'll sign it with a little bit of red. We'll come down into my red. Oops. First, I should have cleaned off my brush. All right. Now the brush is clean. Always an adventure. <laughs> come back into some of that thinner again. And come into this red, and we're just going to spin the brush, spin it, and load it up. And I like to spin it a couple times on the on there just to get the extra gobby paint off. Okay, and then we'll come down here and uh, put my JC. more color. JC. There it is. I just noticed I have a little bit white paint here. Get that out of there. Wrap it around the corner. There we go. All right. Well, that was a lot of fun. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. I had a blast. Uh, I hope you did too. Um, please follow me. Uh, links below, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok uh, to check out all my uh, latest tutorials and fun, cool painting stuff. So much more to come. Again, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. All the best.